Good morning, church. Praise the Lord. The foundation of God's message today is in John chapter 20, verse 19 to 21. John chapter 20, verse 19 to 21. On the evening on the first day of the week, Jesus stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, I am sending you. Before the deliberation of God's message, let us pray. Our dear God, our Lord, our great Heavenly Father, you are omnipresent God. You are all-knowing God. You are most powerful God. Today, Lord, we lift up our hands and minds and to you to be blessed with your words today. And especially, I pray that if we are not deserving before you, Lord, I pray to bless us with your forgiveness, cleanse us from all forms of unrighteousness, and I thank you that your presence will bring freedom, your presence will bring deliverance, your presence will bring healing to today, Lord. So thank you that your words that would be spoken today, Lord, it will bring power to every hearers today, especially your beloved children, Lord. These things we pray to empower me by your spirit, in the name of Jesus, amen. Good morning, church. Good morning, brothers and sisters around the world. May the Lord bless you. God's message is entitled, Peace Be With You. When I prepare this message, I tried to meditate the global crisis we have today, knowing that a lot of people are suffering from different issues, physical, mental, social, and spiritual. And I come to realize that people need the Lord. What we need most today is God. And man without Christ is really uncertain and miserable. Why? Because Jesus is the only powerful one who brings peace to humanity from heaven to earth to show the way. Now the world, the news, brings scary information by broadcasting the number of people who are infected by the virus, number of people died, and number of people who recovered. And lately, they discovered that one out of three got mental illness because of isolation and uh, social distancing, followed by local and global economic depression, depreciation. Now, a lot of people are in trouble today without Christ. No hope, no way, no peace. But praise the Lord. We have great reason to give praise and thanks to God through our Lord Jesus Christ because we're enjoying good health. Are you? And so blessed with his love. Do you feel his love? God loves you. Are you... Are you rejoicing? Are you living in hope and peace? Yes, we are. Today, without further ado, let us discover the meaning and application of Jesus' repeated words after his resurrection. The peace be with you. Firstly, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the first time that Jesus appeared to his disciples, he said, Peace be with you. And then he showed to them the nail mark on his hands and showed to them his side. According to John chapter 20, verse 19 to 20. That time when, when I meditate and try to scrutinize the action of Jesus Christ, when he appeared to his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Look at the nail mark in my hands and see my side. I am thinking of the following words that Jesus may speak at the time. I am he who was crucified and died for your sin. I am he who was resurrected from the dead and now I am alive. Praise the Lord. In John chapter 3 verse 16, 
the word of God says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, and whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. It means that the one who truly believes in Jesus as Lord and personal Savior is peacefully and joyfully secured and saved. So this is the first meaning of peace be with you. Secondly, you are sent to share your salvation across the world. Remember that Jesus, when he was still uh, before his crucifixion, until his resurrection, his, um, his order to his disciples is always to go and preach the good news, to preach the gospel, because the gospel is the only word that has power to save. Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, I am sending you. So he spoke this word to his disciples. And the same thing, if you believe in Christ today, Jesus send you and me. Because it is our responsibility to carry the mission of Jesus. When we go, Jesus promised that I am with you. According to Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20, the word of God said, and this is the great commission of Jesus Christ to his disciples. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is the great commission of Jesus Christ, not only to the disciples, but for you and me who truly believe that Christ is Lord. Our job today is to go and preach the gospel, to make disciples. And the promise of Jesus here is, he is with us always. So the being of God, the being of our God is, he is omnipresent God. Who experienced that in the midst of challenge and trials in life? The being of God, which means God with us or omnipotent or omnipresent God brings the power of Christ's peace. In Christ, church, there is peace. But the condition is to obey him, walk closer with him. I remember the song that blessed me, blessed me so much. The song that says, what he wants or what you wants me to do, I will do. Where you, where you leads me to go, I will go. And the next song that I am really blessed with this song, Christ is enough for me. And the part of that song is, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Next part, the cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back the turning back. If you decided to follow Jesus, because we need to follow, peace be with you. Jesus said, I am with you always to the very end of the, the age. Thirdly, keep seeking the truth. The first eyewitness of Christ's resurrection was the guard at the tomb. It was them who went to report the religious leaders that Jesus was risen from the dead but they were paid to spread the lie. They are ordered to tell the people that during the night when they fall asleep, the disciples stole in the dead body of Jesus. But the Bible is silent church of what was the message that was spread first, the truth that Jesus rose again from the dead or the lie that Jesus never resurrected from the dead. In John chapter 20, verse 25 to 28. This is the continu continuing story of Jesus with his disciples. In verse 25, So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hands into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hands and put into my side. Stop doubting and believe. 
Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Church, my friends, my family, my brothers and sisters, are you one of the doubter like Thomas? The word of God encourages us today. Seek the truth. Investigate what is truth. Do not settle with doubt and loss. Keep moving and seek the truth and be in the side of truth. In John chapter 14, verse 1 to 6, Jesus comforted, Jesus comforted his troubled disciples and said, Do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were so, not so, would I have not told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Praise the Lord. My brothers and sisters, God's word today wants us to evaluate our faith. If we really have faith in Jesus Christ, share your faith to others. Use your spiritual gift in Romans chapter 12, verse 6 to 8. The Bible tells us, the Bible promises us, the word of God promises us that the only way to receive the Holy Spirit, the only way to be filled with the Holy Spirit, the only way to be empowered by the Holy Spirit, Spirit, first, believe in Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is Lord. That is the first, first order. The Word of God says, use your spiritual gift. In verse 6, we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. Today, there are many people who claim that they are a prophets, but we have to be careful because there are false prophets. In verse 7, if it is serving, then serve. Praise God. I am really blessed with the church here, this family church. We're in. There are many people who are really blessed with, with, with the gift of serving. Thank God for you. I thank God for you. The Word of God says, if it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Praise God. If you have that gift, use it according to the word of God. Keep growing, walking, shining with the Lord. The end times is near. May the Lord bless you, church. I hope you are all blessed. The word of God, the word of Jesus, the declaration of Jesus Christ for you today. Peace be with you. Whatever your situation, if you are in physical problem, if you are sick, remember that. Peace be with you. Jesus is your healer. If you're in trouble, we don't know the reason why you're in trouble. Remember that when you receive the declaration of Jesus Christ, peace be with you. You have the peace. Glory to God. I hope that everyone is blessed. Have a blessed weekdays and enjoy to serve the Lord in any way you can. Enjoy to give your best in any way you can. God bless you and let us pray. Praise the Lord. Almighty God, great heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for your words and your declaration that brings peace to every troubled people brings peace to every troubled family, brings peace to those, peace and healing to those who are sick, and brings peace to those who are doubt, doubting, Lord God. And I thank you and praise you, Lord God, that your words will bring peace to those who 
uh, spread the gospel of salvation. Bless all the pastors. Bless all the missionaries. Bless all the evangelists. Bless all the church workers in Jesus' name. And bless all who believes in you. And continue to let us grow, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, because it is your job. It is your work to infill us the in feeling of the Holy Spirit, wherein we really need most this time, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for saving us from our sin. And thank you, Lord God, that we are filled with your Spirit. Continue to use us in any way we can and be glorified and lifted up. Lord, come and rain down. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, church. Bye, and see you next time.